Okay, my friends, this is Roger Spur at a Mud Fossil University. I'm about to blow your mind because there's things that you have accepted that aren't even real. Nobody understands. The speed of light they have no idea about. These are muons. These are electron showers and electron neutrinos. This is light. And they collide these things and they get all these little bits and pieces. They can see these black balls and they can see these white showers. Well, I can too. And we have created them. And here they are. These are the particles. The black balls are the muons. The white balls are the electron showers. As they concuss forward, they glow and they explode and they cause electron showers. And this is the electron showers right here. These are the black balls. These are the white electron showers. Now, let me tell, show you something that is, is going to blow your mind. Because everybody who goes into physics just assumes all this stuff is accepted and real. It's not like they have no idea about it. Well, they're starting to fess up about it. But this is the red laser light. And the, the particle is way back here. And the, that's the particle I showed you a minute ago. And the wave is way out in front of it, which is the magnetic region that it controls. That gives you particle wave duality. That is accelerating. The particles back here is being sucked right out of the wave due to the venturi. Then we get the electron neutrinos, which are the white showers. And we get the muon neutrinos, which are the black balls. We have a particle here nobody's ever considered ever. We show that light accelerates and it slows down. I mean, there's no question about it. Not a thing that they have been talking about is right, and nobody will discuss this. All right, this is Veritasium. This guy is so cool. Now, listen to this. This is saying we're sending a particle out, and it's coming back, and so we're saying it take 10 minutes to get there and 10 minutes to get back, so that's the speed of light. Well, why would it take 10 minutes to go there and 10 minutes to go back? It might take 10 minutes to go there and 5 minutes to get back. We have no idea, and nobody does. So he's saying there's no way we could tell the difference, and he's right. This, guy's, this guy is on top of it. Now, listen, this is funny. Watch. The difference between these two scenarios... But why would the speed of light be different? Well, it's possible that there is some preferred direction through space-time. I mean, our universe has a lot of symmetries, but there is also some asymmetry. For example, why is there so much matter relative to antimatter? And physicists have worked out internally consistent theories of physics in which the speed of light is different forwards and in reverse. The speed of light could vary by just a few percent, up to, at the extreme, going C over 2 in one direction, and infinitely fast in the other direction. Okay. These are all guesses. <laughs> Just put it that way. Because I can show you. I don't, I don't guess. I, I am showing you light. Green light goes faster than red light. I don't care what they say. It, it either goes faster or it's more concussive. But I can show you light slowing down and speeding up, which I just did. So let me, let me, let me figure this out. So... Yeah, I, I kind of don't believe you. I kind of don't believe you. I don't believe you that light is a different speed in one direction but in the other. But I know you well enough to know that you wouldn't, you wouldn't call me, and and put a camera on me unless you knew you were right. And that's what scares me about this. <laughs> that's funny, but it's it's obvious it's going to be different. Because it's a bouncing. It's just like throwing a basketball against a wall and it's bouncing back at you. It's not going to bounce back at you at the same speed you threw it. They, they really have no idea what they're talking about. Because all it is, is a particle banging into another particle that has the same properties and it pushes back. So the light hits it and it pushes back at it. Now it's going to push back according to its density, its fluffiness, and according to the impact of the light, whether it was green or red or blue or some other spectrum which might have a more impactful pushback. I can show all of these things and we will right now and then we're going to go through and watch what they have to say. All right, I'm going to do it a little differently. I'm going to show you everything that I have to show to explain my side of this. But what you're going to see is light going through the atmosphere and sometimes it speeds up sometimes it slows down I can show all these things quite clearly I'm not guessing at anything I'm gonna and you're gonna see exactly what I'm saying and these are these particles coming at us spinning and there is the leading edge of those particles and the little spot in the center is a magnetic particle and you see them they're all in like little six packs 
there's something else going on here that we have to really really do some work on but these are these fields coming at us like bullets and surrounding them is a field of magnetic particles that are left in their wake we're going to get into this pretty deep and and I, I was going to get into a very deep today but it's going to take a very long time so it's still going to take a long time but hopefully you'll get something out of it and then we're going to get as as deep as you can get because everything has to change they know everything changed they said we have to start a whole new physics everything was wrong if the subatomic particles wrong and the nucleus is not made of protons and neutrons it's made out of electrons we do have to start over and it is made out of electrons and here is electron flood theory in a nutshell all that exists are these dipole electrons one explosive portion one dark matter portion eight it's i think it's 1839 and 1840 make up protons and neutrons and in that quantity they become stable in their vibrational state two of them together back to back coming through the air is a neutral particle which is called light and it's depending upon how fast it's coming through the air it will bounce back at a certain rate and it depends on what it hits so it doesn't go at a certain speed I don't believe at all. And then when they impact, you can see radiation. Now, they may go very, very close to the same speed, but I don't believe they are the same speed. And I can show you one quick last one, and then we're going to go into the details. Fabian uh, Brule did this. And uh, these are the green and red particles at the same time coming through the same venture. You see how concussive that is and how less concussive that is? The green takes over and pushes the red away. And then the green reconcusses out there. But originally it has to concuss through the interference that the red presents. And he still has the particles show up. You're going to see all this stuff in a minute. Thank you, mes amis. And Fabian, great job, brother. And Rod Warren did the rest of the work. I just sort of am giving my impression of what I see. So don't forget now, they have never seen any of this stuff other than they've seen these particles show up as collisions, not particles attached together. I'm going to show you them attached together, then colliding, then separating. And when you look up the 21 centimeter line of hydrogen, it talks about these light particles being in parallel and then changing their parallel configuration. And I can show that as well. That's on concussion. Okay, I am highlighting Veritasium. I believe this guy's name is Mark. I'm not even sure, to be honest with you. But he is fabulous. I love the videos he does. Now, here's, here's what he's going to talk about. Nobody's ever measured the speed of light. Listen. listen. I know what you're thinking. Clickbait! No one has measured the speed of light? That's ridiculous. The speed of light is exactly 299,792,458 meters per second. We are so sure of it that since 1983, we've actually used the speed of light to define how long a meter is. It's just the distance light travels in a vacuum in 1 over 299,792,458 of a second. All right. Nobody's ever measured this, and they've always just accepted that Einstein said it's always, it goes the same speed forever. That's it. Case closed. That's why they think all of the universe is going away from us from every direction, like we're the center of the universe, because literally the light is coming at us, it's, it's slowing down, it's shifting to less, it's, in other words, the light started out like this. This is what an actual particle of light looks like. It's actually that particle, and it spins through space with a right-hand spin going forward. If it's extremely powerful light it's real it goes like that now i don't know if that's going faster than the red shift but i do know that as it 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 goes through space it starts to slow down and shifts into the red red is is a longer shift so it's going real fast and it sort of relaxes as it goes and by the time it hits us it's shifted red. That's why they think the whole universe is going away from us. It's just the light coming from it is slowing down as it approaches us. Otherwise, the, the universe would be exceeding the speed of light now. 
It's, it's just, it's, they know everything is just nonsense. And they, had, they get rid of the Bohr model now, that's done. Everybody agrees with that. Now they're looking into the muon, which I have shown, and I will show right now again. All right, so let's start with this. They don't really know what the speed of light is, and I can show you the speed of light varies, in my opinion. They know about this particle, the muon, which is a black ball, and this particle, which is a white shower, which happens when light, or, well, what, what they do is they accelerate protons, chunks of particles, smash them head on, create all these particles, and that's what they're seeing is these things, and they say, well, what is this? Well, originally those two were attached together just as exactly the same size with a white and a black ball, but when they concuss, they separate. The black ball stays the muon, does nothing. It is dark matter. It is dark matter. It does not emit. It does not absorb. It does not concuss. It does nothing but suck in the white particles back, and I will show this. I can prove every word I'm saying. Now, they say, oh, how can you see light? How can you see light? Well, we're taking a picture. We're not taking, we're not taking a film of light. We're taking a snapshot of light. That's how we can see light. All right, here's the rundown. I know I've shown it a hundred times. I'm going to show it another hundred times. Red laser pulsed is this. Up, 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 up. Now, it would do that forever, except we ran it through a Venturi, and when we did that, the particle that was way back here creating this magnetic bubble ahead of it, which concusses with all of the other magnetic particles, which are in the air, everything is magnetic. Everything has electrons, which are magnetic particles. So this concusses with them. It glows as it concusses. And then it accelerated through the Venturi, exploded into the, normally just right here, it was the black and the white balls. All right, so right here was this, the photons. Then they separated into electrons and then into the muons and the electron neutrinos. And, that's, and they actually separated. And that's what white came through here, the black did not. All right, the white and black. Only the white came through, the black did not. This shows right here that we can accelerate and slow down light. It's pretty obvious. We can see that we can accelerate it. We can see that it's a particle. We can see in our other research that it is actually separable from its explosive counterpart, which is the muon, the black black matter, dark matter, it's everywhere. These didn't come off of these white particles here and then run around real quick and jump back over here. These black particles were here waiting. So there's excess black, that's what I believe. And the black is the muon, it's dark matter, it's gravity, it's all of those things. And these are the electrons, which are the concussive, explosive, energetic particles. All right, just remember, it's a whole new world now. All right, these are the muon spinning tops. These are light particles, which are photons. The muon is the black ball, which separates. They don't really know that. What they're finding is electrons. They've separated electrons from photons. So they have that. They've captured these within their ring, and they keep them spinning forever, which is just a separate electron being kept into its magnetic, electronic, push-to-shove center core spinning in a, just this piece, not the two of them together. That's light. So what happens? This particle by itself is moving through this ring that they have created, a magnetic ring, to force it to stay in the center, which is pushing this from both sides. That's all it is. So these have to stay in the center. Now, light can go anywhere. It's neutral. It's because it has it do, it's not it can't really be pushed all that much. When it bangs into something, it bounces. Yes. Absolutely. But it doesn't get sucked or pushed or pulled because it's a neutral particle. It, it's it's basically balanced. Now, if you get hit by one of those, that's not balanced. That wants to be at least one of these. Preferably, it wants to be part of a bigger mass, which is electrons invade. Electricity, it burns, it fuses, it destructs, it vaporizes things, it incorporates. Electro uh, photons, which are the two of them, they bounce. That's why the stronger the, f the ray of light, 
the more photons coming at you, the brighter you get. It's as simple as that. So you have to take into account how hard are you shooting and what colors and how hard is the intensity and the voltage really that you're sending these particles out at and what are they hitting? Are they hitting something soft where they don't really bounce back strong or are they hitting something more like a mirror and they zoom exactly back to you? These are all the things they have to take into account and as they go forward you can see this one is glowing more than that one because it's going forward. It's concussing. That's concussiveness. The black particles do absolutely nothing except their gravity and they are dark, dark matter and they seem to be ubiquitous. They're everywhere, whereas the white particles are only seen when there's energy in motion. The white particles are heat. That's heat. As that moves into something, that right there is a lot of heat because that wants to incorporate. And when it incorporates into something, something changes in the molecular structure which liber literally liberates heat and tries to push an electron out. And that's what heat is, electrons pushed out, cold, I'm, I'm sorry, um, well, heat is electrons invading something, heating it up. But when we feel heat, it's electrons being pushed out, and the thing gets colder because it loses the electrons, it loses the glow. It really, it's not that hard to understand once you understand that the electron flood theory and everything is push to shove. That is pushing, and something is shoving back push to shove. The more push, the more shove, the more glow. The less push, the less shove, the less glow. The more push and and less glow over here, I mean less shove over here, it's going to bounce back less strongly. I mean light cannot travel the same speed in every direction off of every surface in every magnetic field condition. It's just it's literally impossible. And we, I've shown it so, you know, it's time to get off of this nonsense and start doing some real experiments. I have a ton of experiments that, that I'd like to see done that relate to the speed of different frequencies of light and, and um, energy values from here to the space station, from the space station off of a reflective surface of the moon or whatever, off of some different reflective surface off the moon, different areas off the moon or different, you know, oh, I got so many things I want to see done. That are, are not that are all hard to do. They should be all, they're right up there doing them, but I don't think they're thinking about them because they've already concluded that the speed of light is the same speed. Ah, forget about it. Don't, don't. Because it, it, it is a system of denial. They denied Brookhaven for 20 years. Brookhaven found out that the muon, this particle that existed, that, that now they exist. Yeah, yeah, they were right 20 years ago. And the only reason they're saying this is because I showed this muon five years ago, six years ago, and then I, I heard four years ago they started to investigate it and now they came up with their conclusion. I guess it was 2017 they started to create this big magnetic envelope and, and now they can claim, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Brookhaven was right. We just dismissed them because we said, oh, they must be idiots. And that's what, that is the system of denial right now. So it's time to, because I haven't had one single question even about my research, and I, this is pretty damn serious. And my other research in mud fossils is just over the top. And um, not one single even uh, inquiry from anyone in authority. So take it from there. I, I know I know what we're looking at. We're looking at a system of denial is, is education right now. So that's got to change. Absolutely got to change. So Mud Fossil University is your really only alternative right now. The only real, true university where you learn. You're not taught. 